the Savage MSR Recon. Let's check it out. Savage Arms has been making firearms for well over 100 years. And one of the things that Savage is known for is their accuracy. And there are a number of processes that Savage uses to ensure really good accuracy. Whether it's their rifling, whether it's their centering of the bore with the bolt um, and other things, they've just been very well known for that accuracy. And they're a pleasure to shoot. And the great thing is Savage typically is a very reasonably priced firearm. Recently, Savage got into the AR-15 market, and they have produced the Savage uh, MSR, and this is the recon model. Uh, they do make two AR-15 uh, 5.56 models, and then they're making two AR-10 models in 308, and they have a couple of models coming out in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, of course, the question of the day is, why do we need another AR-15 in the market? I mean, it's pretty flooded, isn't it? I mean, we've got a lot of different companies producing these rifles. And I'll tell you guys, there are. There are a lot of guys that are out there making rifles. Most of them are just putting parts together. I don't really consider that producing a new rifle. Savage has been, again, producing AR-15 barrels and other accessories for the AR for the past 30 years. And once you've been in the business that long, you start to see a lot of things that can be improved with a rifle and yet keep the price at the right level. Really, too, with Savage's uh, legendary accuracy, and with the quality of their guns, uh, I think it was a great place for Savage to come in to the market. And we're going to look at some features why I think that this is a very exceptional rifle for the money. Now the gun has been safety checked. It's on a stand, so the magazine is out. Uh, you do get a 30 round PMAG with the gun. What I'm going to start out though with is the optic because I'm going to take this optic off and show it as it comes. This is the Bushnell 1 to 4 Eliminated Reticle AR223 optic. Uh, it's a first focal plane, one to four. Uh, it does have this lever where you can adjust from the one to four. And I think it's really important if you're using this for CQB and then you need to get out to distance. Uh, this scope in itself is just a top notch. And in fact, I'm going to do a whole separate review on this optic. But this is what we were using. And it's in one of the GG&G uh, QD mounts with the lever. The barrel is a very important part of your rifle. In fact, it's the heart of the rifle, that and the bolt carrier group. This is where you're going to get your accuracy. This is where you're going to be able, you know, if you have a really good barrel on here, you get really good barrel life. Uh, this is a 1 and 8 twist barrel. Uh, it's clearly marked 223.556. Now, this is a 223 wild barrel. And one of the problems that comes with accuracy is a 223 is actually more accurate than a 556. And one of the reasons why is because the chamber is a little bit larger in the 5.56 to accommodate a, a myriad of different rounds for the U.S. military. Uh, because of that, accuracy can suffer a little bit. One of the things about the 223 Wild is the chamber it has better tolerances. And in fact, I get into this quite a bit in one of my other videos about 223 Wild. But just suffice to say that it's the best of both worlds and it does give you better accuracy. Uh, but yet you can still fire your 223 and your 556. The barrel is melanite coated, so it has a really nice finish to it inside and out. Um, one of the things about melanite is resistant to corrosion. Um, it's a very slick surface, and so it's going to allow uh, for a longer barrel life as well. Uh, these are 4140 chrome moly vanadium, which are up to mill standards. Uh, it does have an 11 degree crown on the barrel. And guys, I'm telling you, that is huge with accuracy. And it's one of the things that Savage is known for. 
a lot of times I've had guns that just were shooting around and had them crowned and it tightened it up big time. Now you have the muzzle brake on here to protect your crown, but it's still in the manufacturing processes, having a crown barrel is a huge advantage. And here clearly marked on the barrel is caliber 223.556 and then it says twist one to eight. The muzzle device is a standard A2 birdcage. Uh, it is flat on the bottom to keep dust and debris. These are excellent for flash hiding. Uh, there's a lot of different compensators out there on the market that can reduce recoil or muzzle rise, uh, but the A2 has really great flash hiding capability. Of course, there's a low profile gas block in here to be able to accommodate the free float handguard. This is a mid-length gas system. Now, a lot of people feel like that the carbine length gas system is what's needed for a carbine. And that's true when you're shooting a 14 and a half inch rifle but not when you're getting out to the 16 inch rifle the mid-length gas system is optimal uh, you're getting a lot of excessive wear if you're going with a carbine length gas system now i have a number of rifles with carbine length they do fine they function fine but the mid-length gas system is going to be more efficient plus it's going to be less recoil so and it's going to be softer shooting so you're going to be able to get those second third follow-up shots like you need to with the mid-length gas system so i think that is definitely a big plus which leads us to the handguard uh, has a high quality hard anodized finish on it uh, there are M-lock slots. Of course, you have your Picatinny rail on top. Uh, one of the, the things that, to me, is just incredible about this is it, how thin it is. I mean, it is super thin. Now, there are different handguards out on the market that are thin, but typically they're pretty expensive. Uh, you know, you can, to really get a decent handguard, a good quality handguard, you know, can cost you from, you know, $180 to $200, $225. So that really ups the price. And it's one of the things that's great that this is included with the rifle. It is a 12 inch and it's their slim model. Forged upper and lower, this is a 70-75 T6 aluminum, which is up to mil spec. Uh, some AR-15 uppers and lowers are 60-61 T6. Uh, not quite as durable, these are stronger. Uh, one of the things though that's really unique about this rifle, and it really sets it apart from most of the rifles, is that this is a custom forging it's not a billet it is this is forged all and all this design that's in here uh, is completely separate from what you're seeing most of your forged lowers uh, which i i think is very impressive um, you've got a this notch right here at the ma magazine well when you put your finger here it naturally kind of rests right here and so a lot of guys will hold their finger up but me when i bring it down i rest it but this gives you a little spot a memory spot. I really like that and every time I grabbed the rifle and I would set it in there it just made me feel great about holding this rifle. And I know that sounds kind of crazy but it just made a big difference. Uh, it is a hard anodized finish so it's very well done. Uh, the design right here is nice and it has a little texturing so you can get a, a good grip on it if you like to hold at your magazine well. Of course, it does have your standard dust cover, uh, and it has the forward assist, which some are going away from forward assist. And guys, to be honest with you, I've used forward assist twice, but I have used forward assist. <laughs> so I personally like the forward assist just to have it there. On the patrol model, this is actually just a button, and it's not an actual working forward assist, but it allows for you to add one if you want. The rear sight's polymer. You just push forward, and it pops a metal blade up and this is just a little aperture sight um, and then it kind of pops down you push in and you hold into place and then that corresponds with the front sight and there's a small little button and it pops up has ears right here uh, metal sight polymer base and then it just flips right down these are fully adjustable for elevation and the side the rear sight's adjustable for windage your windage knob is right here on the side and you can adjust this however uh, most of your Nicer rifles are coming without sights because there's so many different sight options. Uh, it's nice to have the sights. Uh, to be honest with you, this the sights, I'm not so thrilled about these sights. I mean, they work and they're great, uh, but I would probably myself, um, you know, replace these with something a little different. But again, they work. Now, the stock set that comes with the rifle is one of the Black Hawk Axiom uh, six position stocks, and uh, it's on a, a standard mil spec buffer tube. Uh, the adjustments up here at the front, which is different, uh, different than a lot of other actions, uh, it does have your QD points and it does have a footman's loop here. 
Uh, one thing that I really like about this rifle, it, it does have some d space on the top here to be able to get a good cheek weld. And also this rubber butt pad is really generous. Uh, this is not on the patrol model, this part, but the stock is. Also they have one of the Blackhawk Knox uh, pistol grips. Uh, very ergonomic grip. It's a little different, a little unorthodox, but it definitely has a really good feel to it and it fills the hand back here. A really nice stock set. Uh, one of the things though to me that was a little bit of a downside is I wanted to grab the adjustment here and I kept grabbing it when I had to get used to grabbing it here. So, um, you know, maybe it's just one of those training issues, making sure that you can get it up front. But uh, it did throw me off and um, so that's one of the things I, I kind of didn't like about it. But uh, it's a nice looking stock set and something you could definitely get used to. You have your standard charging handle uh, and then the castle nut is staked, which I really like that. A lot of times here we're not seeing castle nuts being staked, uh, but it's good to see these. Uh, you're not really taking your buffer tube on and off anyway. You can change your stocks without this. And this gives you some strength. These can turn in hard use. Okay, with the Blackhawk Blaze trigger, again, this is a polished trigger. Uh, it's mil spec, but it's also been hardened. And want to get just an idea of the trigger pull. Uh, it is smoother than your standard mil spec, but we're going to have see how much take up we have. Just a little bit of take up to get you set up for your shot, but a decent crisp snap. Let's try it again. Teeny bit of take up. Very crisp on the snap. Reset. Right there. All right, we're going to check trigger pull weight with the Lyman trigger gauge. Six pounds, 0.5 ounces. Five pounds, 15 ounces. Five pounds, 15.5 ounces. So just around the uh, six pound mark. And again, it's crisp, has a good take up, um, a great trigger. Not a competition trigger, not a great target trigger, but a very acceptable trigger. Now we're going to get into the inside of the rifle, and there are some things about it that really set this rifle apart. Uh, one of the things is that it's really tight. The action is tight with the receiver. I mean, there is no play whatsoever. And uh, I was trying to push this takedown pin through, and I can barely do it without a punch. So we're going to pop it through. Now the trigger is a mil spec trigger, but it's called the Blackhawk Blaze trigger. Uh, and it's a mil spec, but it's been polished and finished just to give you a nicer, crisper trigger pull. And then another thing that you'll notice is this little pin down here. Right here, this is actually to tighten up the action, the lower and the upper action. And this is something that a lot of companies have started to do to really give this a good tight setup. And this really accurizes your rifle. I'm going to go ahead and pull out our bolt carrier group. Okay, we have an M16 bolt carrier, uh, and then the bolt itself is Carpenter 158 steel, which is up to mil specs. Uh, the uh, gas key is properly staked. M4 feed ramps with the cuts into the receiver, uh, and this is going to help with feeding and reliability, which is pretty standard. But one thing that Savage does is what they call the zero tolerance headspace control, and that is matching the bolt with the center of the bore of the rifle uh, and that really leads to good accuracy. Another thing that Savage does is what they call the 5R rifling. One thing, six to eight lands and grooves typically for most of your rifles, uh, but typically six for your AR-15. One of the things about the lands and grooves is it's at a 90 degree angle and that can put a lot of dirt and debris in between. It makes it much harder to clean. Plus it puts pressure because it's coming from each end onto the bullet and can deform the bullet. Uh, with the 5R rifling, it's five lands and five grooves. And what you have is a tapered shoulder. This allows for concentric action of the bullet as it's going down the chamber and it makes it easier to clean. So it's one of the things that leads to better accuracy, typically with your Savage. Uh, with the Metal Knight finish, which I didn't mention, but it's the QPQ finish, uh, which means quench, polish, quench, and that is their method, and it's a nitro carburizing finish on the inside and outside of your barrel. It's also been button rifled. I don't thank Federal Premium uh, for sending the ammunition 
not only the bulk 556 or 223 but also the federal gold match which we're going to shoot a few rounds of that through here just to test out the accuracy I like to start out at about 25 yards, go to 50, and go to 100. And it kind of lets me see what's going on with the rifle. Uh, this was with Federal Bulk at 25 yards. And I thought, well, that's great. Now let's just see if we can keep it kind of close to that at 100. And that was with the Bushnell 1-4. to Now we pulled out the Federal Match uh, 69 grain boat tail hollow point. This was at 50 yards. And uh, four shot group four shot group which that was beautiful uh, and then another four shot group and then this was just a three shot group but you can see that at 50 yards even I mean we have really nice tight groups so to find out really what the rifle is capable of we pulled out the primary arms 4 to 14 and put it on here this is the R grid scope I use this on the uh, AB arms gun as well this allows you to really get the magnification down and this was at 100 yards uh, groups here and here were the first groups Brought it down just a little bit because I was shooting it at 25 and 50. And here we had a sample of four different groups uh, using, again, the Federal Match Grade 69 grain. Um, this was at 100 yards, and as you can see, these groups are all sub-MOA. Uh, in fact, all of them are three-quarters of an inch, and these are five-shot groups. This one was still not quite an inch, even that group. So um, this is just the kind of accuracy that can be delivered through a Savage semi-automatic semi, you know, rifle. So I think that you know Savage is doing it right. And with the 223 wild barrel, with the different properties they're using, I think you're going to find that this rifle is going to be very accurate. You know, one of the things about shooting a lot of AR-15s is, after a while, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, you know, the usually it's mil-spec parts, uh, you know, the handguards may be a little bit different, this may be. But one of the things about this rifle is, because of, especially with the uh, custom forged lower, uh, with the really thin handguard, with the Black Hawk furniture, uh, it really gave it a totally different feel to it. Uh, and also with this scope. Uh, I was very pleased with the Bushnell scope, uh, especially with this large handle. I mean, it just really made it easy uh, to get on target, to adjust when I needed to. When you have a solid grip on here, you're not with two fingers trying to turn that. You can just grab it and turn, even with it in the down position, which I typically kept it in that. It is a first focal plane scope, so that also made it nice. Uh, but as far as the handling of the rifle, uh, the receiver, it has a few features on it you know that we mentioned but this little place right here in front of the trigger guard it's just a real natural place to bring your finger out of the trigger guard and rest it on that magazine well um, the uh, reliability was excellent uh, no malfunctions whatsoever I mean it, this gun just shot which is typical for most of your good quality AR-15s the handguard is really thin so you're able to get a really solid grip on here whether you like to ride it out front or toward the back very smooth finish on here as well. Of course, the M-Lock accessories, that works nice. Um, you know, your standard Picatinny rail on top. Uh, the sights were great. Uh, we used the standard sights on the front and with irons. Um, with the one thing about the irons on the back, um, that little blade, it was a little bit different, and uh, but it worked very well. Uh, but typically I like to run optics on my rifles anyway so we did take it out with just the sights at one point uh, but I was really glad to get an optic on here. Now, as far as the furniture on the rifle the grip very hand feeling I mean it just makes it really solid in your hand uh, nice texturing uh, was able to really get a hold of it and there's this beveled area right here which just allows for your finger to come in and again rest right here on that magwell uh, the stock very comfortable and with this large rubberized butt pad and i mean a very thick putt pad 
the only thing though that I really didn't care for is the unlocking was up here at the front. I kept wanting to change it right here because I'm so used to Magpul and others. Uh, you want to grab here and so I kept having to find it and that was one thing I, I would say that I really don't care for about this stock. Uh, being grabbing it right here, uh, but once you start to get used to it, you know, it's no big deal And if you don't have a lot of experience here, uh, this works out just fine But the rifle maneuvered well with the thin hand guard. You're able to get Transitions very nicely uh, the stock again. It just fit nice on the shoulder um, It is just an AR-15 so a lot of this is intuitive for AR-15 owners But I think there's some pluses that go along with this rifle if you like to grab right here in front of the magazine Well, you have a little bit more texture uh, so it kind of fits different styles and if you don't want to use it you don't have to the trigger is better than a mil spec trigger uh, it does break a lot cleaner and no creep uh, of course obviously if you're really going to get great accuracy it's good to put you know a really high dollar uh, very match grade type trigger but the groups were very acceptable with this rifle now the retail price on the recon is $9.99 I've looked in a number of different places and I'm finding it for around the $800 and less mark uh, Which is really great considering the free float handguard and a lot of the other features Especially the custom forged lower receiver for the patrol model it runs 849 Which is their base model and there were a number of those around the 650 mark. So getting into that really uh, standard budget line rifle to be honest with you so I think the price is definitely good for a well-known brand and with all the different features you're getting. But let's talk about some pros and cons. Uh, pros first, the barrel to me and the accuracy of this rifle, what its potential is, is just, you know, exceptional. Uh, with the 5R rifling, button pulled, 1 and 8 twists, you can handle all your different uh, weights on your bullet weights. Mid-length gas system, the fine free float handguard uh, with the custom features on your lower forged receiver and the open trigger guard uh, that also is a big plus uh, your black hawk furniture it's suitable it's nice uh, it, it's not necessarily my preference i, I mean I, I like it fine it worked great you know that to me is i don't know maybe getting used to it i might change my mind i do like the rubber butt pad and i do like the way the grip feels in my hand uh, I guess the biggest thing is just this, where the, the place is to adjust it. It kind of throws me off a little bit, but I'm used to certain things. Now, as far as the sights go, I, I'm not a big fan of the sights. Uh, they're fine, and it's great that they have them included with the gun. A lot of your sight-ready carbines have no sights included, and that's usually about $100 plus value, just the sights. Um, so I usually run a scope, so that's not a big deal. But the, uh, the polymer plastic... You know, I do use M-Bus sights, so I guess I can't say a whole lot. But I, the blade is just a little unorthodox, um, which, but it works. So that's not a huge con, but it is something that, you know, I'd probably change out uh, if I had the rifle. But there's a lot of small details about this rifle that are exceptional. There's not really any game changer here that's not. Um, you know, the couple of things that I've mentioned, it's not really that big a deal. Uh, the rifle itself is ready to go right out of the box. And that's really what counts. And when you're spending, you know, $850 to $800 on a really good quality rifle, uh, that's an exceptional bargain. And then you've got the Savage name behind it and their accuracy. I think it's a win-win. But one of the things I always try to say is look at other reviews, check them out. Don't make a decision on buying anything on just one review. Uh, there's, gonna be, there's a number of reviews out there on this rifle. There are going to be more. Take a look at them. Make your choices. Uh, these are just my findings, and they've been nothing but great. I mean, the reliability on the rifle was fantastic, and uh, the way it handled was great. The accuracy was exceptional. So I think it's just a top-notch rifle, but again, you know, your mileage may vary, as my good friend Nothing Fancy says. <laughs> and I want to thank Savage for sending the rifle for the test and evaluation. Uh, it's really nice when companies get behind YouTube channels, and, you know, especially with new guns, when they're first coming out, these can be very difficult to get. And it gives you an idea of, you know, the features and if this might be something you're looking for. So Savage, big thumbs up. And I want to thank Rodney from the NC Hill channel for coming out with me uh, one day at the range and doing a lot of testing and shooting and giving me his thoughts, uh, but most of all, for a lot of good laughs. John Wick, I got this. Come on, John Wick. Okay. Come on, John Wick. Get it.
Now you can go to the Savage Arms website and check out all the different details, especially some of the new models, whether it's the AR-10 line uh, in 308 or in 6.5 Creedmoor. And they are really doing a great job. Savage, again, has been in the business for over 100 years, been making parts and accessories for over 30 years for the AR-15. And decided that, you know, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. MRS, <laughs> MSR, Modern Savage Rifle. There are some processes that go into what, at, what... <laughs> One thing though about the stock setup, uh, the Black Ops, okay. Eh, I don't want to mention that. Range day, here with Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I thought it was the Three Stooges myself. Okay, Larry, Moe, and Curly. <laughs> they say we don't take them out enough. 